Jam here to debunk one of the biggest myths in cruise travel. And that is that it's cheaper to book directly with a cruise line than to use a travel agent. It's not true. The price on the cruise is the same. The commission is built in. So you either are going to give that commission back to the cruise line or give it to a travel agent who's going to help you by, of course, helping you book your trip, but they're also gonna give you a perk of some kind. It could be onboard credit, it could be a specialty dining meal, it could be a bottle of champagne to your room. Last week, I had a chance to sit down with Rob from Cruise Seekers, who is a travel agent, and he shared all the ins and outs of using a travel agent along with lots of tips and tricks. Now, to get right to the place you're interested in, I put chapters in the description below, so you can just go there and pick out what you're interested in. Hi, and so I'm Christy, and I'm so excited today because I have Rob from Cruise Seekers, who is a travel agent, but he's also a YouTuber, and that's how I originally learned about him, is I was just going and you know, watching different YouTubes and Rob came up and he was doing, I think they were doing, mm, I'm sure it was a celebrity cruise. It, it Yeah. It kind of seems like you, your recent cruises have been on celebrity. Yes, so, it has. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I just, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm super excited to be here, Christy. Great. Well, today I just kind of want to go over, you know, I, I'm always super curious about how people get into cruising and how they get into doing, you know, YouTube. You know, how did you get into cruising in the first place? Well, that was about well over 20 years ago. I went on our first cruise on, I believe it was April of 2000 on the Costa of Victoria into the Caribbean. And it was, you know, it was one of our best experiences as a family on a cruise with a family vacation. I remember my wife and my son crying when we got off the ship. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> That's so sweet. So how many cruises have you been on? Well, we've been on 16 and we got our 17th one coming up next week. Um, so yeah. Where are you we, going next week? Next week, we got a 15-day cruise going to Hawaii from Los Angeles. Oh, wow. That is awesome. And what? Well, who or what are you sailing on? I'm going to be on the Discovery Princess out of LA. I don't think it takes 15 days to sail to Hawaii, does it? No, it takes five days. Okay. Um, so you get to Hawaii in five days. Okay. Uh, and then you pop around the islands for four days, and then we head on back. And they stop at Ensenada because you got to stop at a foreign port. Okay. So we stop okay. at Ensenada, and then we head back up to LA. We talked about you becoming a, a cruiser, and then how about becoming a travel agent? Like, well, that's relatively recent. Um, we only started this up about a little over a year ago, right around that time frame. I would say a little over a year ago where we booked our first true client at that time. Um, and it's it's been a wild, wild ride. We kind of built that from our YouTube community. Um, it was just a natural progression. We were cruising more. We wanted to cruise more. And it was just a natural way to just say, you know what? We really love doing this. And we talked to some travel agents when we were on cruises before. And we said, we can do this. And that's when we started up, me and my wife. So Rob, you know, what's the benefit of booking with a travel agent? First thing is you're going to save money all the dang time, no matter what, whether it's not cash in your pocket right off the bat. You're going to get something. You're going to get onboard credit. You're going to get uh, maybe tips to pay for your, you know, your room steward or your waiter, those type of things. Um, you might even get specialty dining with some places. You're going to get something. So if you don't book with a travel agent, you're basically taking money out of your pocket and you're just lighting it on fire. I learned that when I was just talking to, you know, people on the cruise ships when I was traveling before I booked with a travel agent. I said, uh, I got to get into that. I like onboard credit. I like free meals. I, I like not having to pay for the tips out of my pocket. So that's when we started. And then eventually you start getting to know your travel agent more and you start hearing the things about group rates, which I'm like, what the heck are those? Do I have to be like the same person that is over there? That's like a knitting group. They go, no, no, no. These are promotional group rates. Um, they just use it to sell into these um, cruise ships with, with great rates to kind of promote to their clients to get them on ships and get people cruising. So that's when I learned about group rates. I was like, oh, cool. I don't have to sit with the same people or, you know, those people. That's great. It's just like my own vacation, but now I'm saving money. It'd be pretty hilarious if you're like, oh, I've got a great group for you. And then you get there and you're like, oh, they're a bunch of underwater basket we. Yeah, exactly. And I, I should have been not like my type of people, but hey, I saved money. I'll eat dinner with you. <laughs> 
That is so fun. So, you know, for people out there that don't know what onboard credit is and how can you use it, can you kind of explain that? You talked about that is one of the perks. Yeah, so onboard credit is basically something you can use on the ship for anything you purchase on the ship. And some cruise lines even, such like such like Royal Caribbean and also Celebrity, you can actually use that onboard credit for anything you want to purchase before you get on the ship through their cruise planner. That's another nice thing. It's the way you can like kind of defray some cost. You can even use it in the dang casino. If you want to take like $100 onboard credit and put it through the machine and see if you can make it $200, go right ahead. They don't mind. Um, you just got to make sure instead of putting cash into that machine, you just charge your uh, gambling to your room so that it gets offset by the onboard credit that gets attached to your portfolio. I I did not know that. So that's that's kind of cool. So what happens if you win big? Then if you even if you use that onboard credit to that, then you just cash that out as money. And that's another little interesting kind of trick. Some people do this. They might actually go to the machine play for like $10, right? And then cash out their onboard credit too. And now they got cash to use even offshore. So there's a little tip right there too. Some people do that to kind of pull money out of their onboard credit that they had if they had a ton and they figured they're not going to use it on the ship, but they might use it on shore. You can kind of fool the system, game the system by pulling the money uh, out through the casino. That's genius. So you, just to make sure, not that I have a bunch of onboard credit, but let's just say I had $500 onboard credit. Uh -huh. I go to the casino. I say that it's my work. Then I play for like- Pull out $500, right? Yeah. And then- Get a ticket. Yeah. Then you get a ticket. Get a ticket and they hand me cash, 500 bucks. Yeah. Oh, ah, that is a great tip. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love that. I never knew that. That is a great tip, which is another reason to use your travel agent because then you exactly. get great tip. When I first started cruising, you know, you'd see these advertisements. Oh, you can cruise for $500 going, you know, to Alaska. And now that I've cruised, I know that there's some other costs. So what are some hidden costs that maybe new cruisers want to know about? Well, you know, you got your typical, you know, it's all market speak, right? When you hear this $500 per person, you know, or whatever, you might even see something along the line of $25 per night, right? Per person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're trying to get you in with the lowest possible rate. There's other fees associated to this as well. You got your taxes, your fees, and your port expenses right off the bat. You're going to always have that. There's also something called, we kind of alluded to this beforehand, called your automatic gratuities. That's the money that will go to your cabin steward and to your wait staff and a lot of people behind the scenes, not just the people that are doing that direct service to you. Um, they all take part of that tip pool. So that's why I always recommend to keep that tip on your portfolio all the dang time. But that's a hidden cost, right? If you're traveling to the cruise port and you're driving, that parking at the cruise port can be pretty, pretty darn pricey. So always understand that. You also got to think about what my airfare is going to be. Sometimes people just think, oh, the last time I went to, you know, to Florida, the airfare was $200 round trip. It's not $200 anymore, folks. The airfare has gone crazy. Understand, you know, airfare might have changed since the last time you went. So always think about that as an extra expense in your budget. Make sure you take care of that. Excursions. Excursions are costly, especially if you go to Alaska. Alaska's got one of the highest priced excursions. I'm learning now that Hawaii has a very, very high priced excursion. So you got to kind of adjust your budget for those type of things if you want to do it. Now, you don't have to do excursions. You can just walk around the port and kind of just see how it's all about. But if you want to kind of truly visit the place, budget that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, we're going to Alaska this summer and we are started booking some excursions. And like you said, Alaska, the ports, because we went last summer, you know, they're just these small little towns. So that's not really why you're going to Alaska. You're going to Alaska to get like a real feel of Alaska. Definitely, definitely budget in your excursions. So is that something you help people with? You help them like decide which excursions to take? Do you book excursions for them when you do book excursions? Are you booking excursions through the cruise line? It all depends upon what the people want. Some people want to book through the through the cruise line and they're not very tech savvy. I have some you know older clients and they just say, hey, can you help me with this? And I help them with that. Do travel agents cost money? How much do they cost? Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, some travel agents do charge a fee. I don't. Some of them do. We get a commission from the cruise lines. Every, every, every booking has a commission in there, whether you book it with the travel agent or whether you book it with the cruise line. The, the commission's already built into the fee that you're paying. You're just making a choice. 
Do I give it to a travel agency or do I give it back to the cruise line to pay for their call centers? And that's basically all it is. It's nothing more than that. And because of that, we are taking on the role of the call center, the role of customer service for the cruise line. So people say, well, you're being paid by the cruise line. Why are, are you really, truly, honestly, a advocate for the passengers? I'm like, yeah, because we are your customer service. That is the role that we take on when we accept that commission. So without those clients, we have nothing. We are exclusively there for you. Wow. So that's so interesting. Who would even know? Like that is something as a new, you know, I'm a, I'm a newbie. So as a newbie, I would never know that. I would never know that they're just taking the money as opposed to allowing, you know, a travel agent to take get that money. Some of these larger agencies, right, that that are trying to get as many people into their funnel as possible, um, you're only really kind of just shuttling money around, right? Instead of being in a big call center with the cruise line, you're being in a big call center with another big travel agency, such as, you know, cruise.com that a lot of people see, or, you know, some other big ones, Costco, for example, right? Every time you call in Costco, you're calling into a call center. You never know who you're going to get. And so it's same thing. When you work with a local travel agency, it's different. You get our cell phone number, you get my email, you get our 800 number, someone that will pick up rather than it being straight to voicemail. Now, if you do get voicemail with me, it's mainly because I'm on the phone with another client. But the funny thing is, is I usually get back to you within 10, 15 minutes. It's odd that I don't get back to a person within an hour. I've experienced that. The first time I reached out to Rob was on New Year's Day. I sent, I think I sent you an email. And yeah, you, you're you like, okay, I can talk to you. And I'm like, what? New Year's Day, this is awesome. And it's just, it's a different feel, right? You know, you're working with a small business, um, somebody who really, really cares now. As I said, some travel agents, they're, you know, they're not as responsive. You, you just got to really find your way get good recommendations from your friends and family. That Those are gold. To me, every referral that I get is gold to me because I know I've done a good job and now I have to do a good job for other people, right? So that's really, really important. Talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors. Who do they use? Do they recommend them? Make sure you ask the question, why is your travel agent the one you use? And really key into that you know, responsiveness because that's what you're going to want. Because when things go south, the travel agent is going to be your advocate, whether you're off the ship, on the ship, whatever. They can get people moving in the right direction to get your situation resolved. Ooh. You said a lot there. So what I'm hearing is, is when you do get a travel agent, you want a travel agent that's going to respond. You yep. want a travel agent that's available and and so what I'm hearing is you can be on the ship and have some kind of issue and you can reach out to your travel agent even from the ship and they sure. can maybe remedy the problem. Uh, things with Wi-Fi on the ship, right? I have, you know, if you have the ability to, you know, I have an Apple phone and if you have an Apple phone, you can iMessage with Wi-Fi. It's awesome. Or you can use Zoom to try to connect with me or anything, any other kind of technology. Facebook Messenger, that's another one people get in touch with. Now, working with the cruise line, they'll be perfectly happy in working with you and getting things resolved for you. But if you don't think it's up to snuff, it wasn't a good enough resolution, you think, and you just get nowhere, that's when they call me and they say, Rob, this doesn't seem right. This is what they're doing. This doesn't seem right. And we fix that. Can you give me an example of when someone was on a cruise and they needed to reach out to you? Exactly. One time was that I had a client. They were um, a client that didn't drink alcohol, right? And I knew for a fact that when you go up to the celebrities, customer service, the guest services, if you have that classic drink package, but you want to downgrade to say just, you know, the zero proof alcohol. Now, the reason why you might want to do that if you don't drink alcohol is because there is really cool things that you get with the zero proof that you don't get with the classic drink package. You get the premium water and they wanted the premium water and they wanted the smoothies. You don't get the pre the smoothies with the classic drink package. So they wanted a downgrade. Well, the person at the front desk must have been new, didn't know what was going on. They were giving them a lot of problems. So they called me. I called my business development manager. They called Shoreside. Shoreside called over into the ship. Ship got everything straightened out. They they basically tracked the person down at dinner and said, we are so sorry. This is what you're getting. 
take, you, you don't worry about that. You know, is there anything else we can do to help you? Wow. That's, that's amazing. Wow. I would never even think, never even think. So that's, that is a big perk. So we have the, we have those kind of benefits. So you're saving money because of group rates, you're saving money because of online onboard credit or other perks that you will get by using a travel agent. So let's go on the other side. What are some downsides for using a travel agent? Well, there's really none if you use me or a good travel agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The downside is, though, if you do have one of those ones that just don't respond, right? That can be really, really tough. You're in a bad situation. You need to get something straightened out, and you can't get response. So that's one bad thing. Some big cruise um, travel agencies, such as Costco, if you book a cruise through Costco, you're not going to be able to use that, you know, move up program or Royal up program. That's the bidding to get a suite or to bid to go from an inside to a balcony. Um, some of these big cruise um, travel agencies don't allow their clients to use those facilities. That could be a negative downside for um, using a travel agent if you use one of those type of travel agencies. So again, do a lot of research who you are using to try to avoid those pitfalls. Because if you avoid those type of situations, there is absolutely no negative reason to use a travel agency um, if they are responsive, if they get you good rates, if they will make sure you are an, they're an advocate for you. And there's really no downsides whatsoever. Here's another question um, just about... Do you help with, or do you have advice for travel insurance? I know that's a big thing that every, every YouTuber that I've watched is get travel insurance. And I did my first time. I just got it through princess. Uh -huh. No, Holland America. And then since then, uh, I, I don't, but I, I still get travel insurance, but can you tell us a little bit about travel insurance? Um, me personally, I always, always, always use travel insurance, right? Um, travel insurance to me is just like auto insurance, right? It's protecting me against bills I do not want to have any part of, right? Now, everybody's need for travel insurance is different. Some people are a little are able to be able to accept more risk, right? I don't care if I lose the money for the part of the cruise, but all I do care is, is that if I am airlifted off the cruise, I'm covered, right? So there's different travel insurance for that. So you don't have to bring in cancellation and trip interruption insurance. You can just have something that has a pretty good coverage for medical evac and medical additional medical coverage. And you can keep your rates pretty low because of that. And that's the really cool thing about talking with a travel agent because a lot of people don't know you can do something like that. And, you know, that's what we can do and help you. Like, I wish that I would have used, you know, you or a different travel agent the first time I cruise because there's so many things that I know now that I didn't know then. So what are some things that first time cruisers, by using a travel agent, you're going to kind of steer them in the right direction? If people don't know about loyalty programs, that's one, right? Hey, do you have a loyalty number? Loyalty number? What's that? And I help them set that up. Right? That's number one. Number two, how do I book excursions? They have no clue, right? They don't know that you can create an account on the, you know, with the cruise line and go see exactly what they offer. Well, how do I do specialty dining? You know, I help them out with that. Well, where should we go? Have you ever been on this ship? And we, where would you go for specialty dining? Well, what do you like? Do you like seafood? Do you like steak? Do you like Italian food? Do you like uh, teppanyaki? Do you have a lot of kids that, you know, teppanyaki to me is a great, great, great specialty restaurant if you have kids. If you don't have kids, you know, the food is, man, it's a great show. But if you did it once, it's a one and done. So, you know, like you know, if you've never been to Benihana, great, go. You'll have a great time. If you've been to Benihana, you might want to skip that. Go to the steakhouse. You'll get better food. Uh, so good. So good. Well, I am just had such a great time talking to you today. And I, I think we've probably covered the gamut. Maybe not everything. So those of you out there, if you have questions, can you tell us where they can get to you, Rob? How, sure. how are they going to get to you? If you want to reach me, you can call 1-800-874-1847. Extension 1 brings you to me, Rob. Extension 2 brings you to my wife, Cheryl. Great. 
Well, thank you so much. It was really fun talking to you. And I learned a lot about using a travel agent and just travel in general. And I just so appreciate your time. No problem. Anytime, Chrissy. All right. Happy dairy. Take care.